one. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin with our eye on the tropics and an update on Hurricane Fiona, which continues to strengthen now that the center has started to move away from the Dominican Republic. So moving away from land and really nothing in its future to hinder any further development and strengthening. And that is what is expected per the Hurricane Center's forecast. Here are the latest. Winds are now 100 miles an hour, so the storm is now a Category 2. Note the rainfall over, wait, it says the United States, that is Puerto Rico. We're getting still some of those bands of heavy rain, not as bad as they had been. So finally starting to see some of that rainfall subside over the island itself. It's more eastern, kind of extreme eastern Dominican Republic. One of the land masses get are still getting in on some of the heavier to moderate rainfall with the center of the storm still north. So as the storm kind of pulls almost more northwest, that will start taking a lot of that moisture away from the island and we should start to see improving conditions. But the rainfall totals that we have seen on Puerto Rico are extreme from just having been a category one storm. That's why you really can't compare storms. Even weak hurricanes or even tropical storms can produce incredible amounts of rainfall. So the motion is northwest at 10 miles an hour. It is going to be taking the center very close to the Turks and Caicos up toward the northwest. May just avoid the islands and certainly staying well to the east of the Bahamas. Note the forecast now from the Hurricane Center as we head into the day tomorrow and on into Wednesday. So through the next several days, further strengthening up to a category four. So it is looking very likely based on what has been going on with Fiona in the short term and what is likely to continue considering the environmental conditions are conducive for further strengthening that Fiona may become our first major hurricane. Again, we have not seen a major hurricane so far this season. If it avoids all land, you can take all of these major hurricanes out in the open waters. Unfortunately, though, it does look like it may pass over Bermuda as a weakening storm, but still about a category three. We'll see, but it does look like it may take the center of the storm right over the island. The note as we head late into the week, it starts to feel the effects of an upper trough and starts quickly moving northward, possibly all uh, directly impacting the Canadian Maritimes. As far as the eastern seaboard goes, higher surf would be the only impacts of the east coast of the United States. Again, a potential landfall again of the storm, perhaps by by the start of the weekend up toward the Canadian Maritime. So that is Fiona. Again, forecast pretty much locked on. I will say the forecast uh, track has been pretty locked on even since late last week. As we've always said, the intensity forecast is not nearly as good as the track forecast. And clearly the intensity forecast has been a little bit off with some weakening and then some rapid strengthening of the storm over the weekend, which is almost impossible to foresee. And the computer models are only so good with these type of forecasts. But as far as the track goes, again, the surrounding atmosphere is much better sample to where we have a much clearer idea of where these storms are going to go. So Fiona, again, not a threat for us, never really was a threat for us. The only area that we're going to be watching in the say long range is a wave that is still well to the east of the southern Lesser Antilles. So these are toward the windward islands. The southern islands are the windwards and northern islands are the leeward. So this may be impacting those islands in say the middle to end of the week and then eventually getting into the Caribbean. Why we show that? Well, if you've been on social media, there are a lot of posts about where this system may go in the long range. That is a long term forecast, which as we have seen and as we have seen with many tropical systems just this season, but even going into past seasons are very, very unreliable. So let's take it into the more near term forecast. Both the models, the GFS and the Euro, which you're looking at in red and green, show where they're forecasting perhaps a low pressure center trying to form. So maybe an organizing system. The GFS is the one that organizes a little bit better as we head toward the weekend and early next week. This is Monday of next week. So this is a full seven days out, this storm would only be in the central or western, northwestern, maybe Caribbean. So a full seven days out, this is still well away from us. However, both the GFS and the Euro are indicating some type of organization with this. Now, with that said, the GFS and the Euro have done this before, where they start picking up on a very weak wave, develop it, 
and then it ends up nothing happening. The forecasts do not verify. So I'll put that out there along with the forecast of what is looking based on the models a likelihood. Not a strong likelihood, but again, this is solely based on what the models are saying, a likelihood of something trying to form in the Caribbean. Anything getting toward the Caribbean, obviously we're going to pay a little bit more attention to. Here's what's going on in the atmosphere right now. Still have a lot of dry air across not only the main development region of the Atlantic, but also across the Caribbean. That dry air looks like it is going to hang around for a while longer. Now, it does appear to, as though uh, this is based on the Euro model. We're looking at the dry air and moisture that this little wave may take advantage of a pocket of moisture near it and allow it to start strengthening a bit or organizing, if not strengthening necessarily, as we head into the weekend and early next week. So you see this kind of pocket of moisture still very much surrounded by dry air, which I will say dry air usually doesn't play very well under the computer model. Sometimes these little areas or pockets of dry air can kind of undercut the circulation, help to erode away that surface circulation, help to erode away the storms from that cir sur surface circulation point about that is there is still very much an unknown with regards to dry air with these developing systems. Now, as far as wind shear goes, that looks like it's going to be fairly low across the Caribbean over the coming days. When you look at the brighter colors, the oranges, the reds, the purples, the fuchsia, that looks like it's going to stay away from the Caribbean. So it looks as though it's going to have fairly low wind shear. So a fairly low wind shear environment, but still relatively high dry air may all cause some kind of battle with this system trying to organize through the Caribbean. Again, the big question is whether or not it's, one, able to really organize in the near term, two, if it's able to organize itself in the Caribbean, and then three, where it's going to go. Keep in mind, this point, it is still in the Caribbean, and at this point, it is still seven days out. So when you start seeing those long-term forecasts, remember, three to five days you've got a little bit of a fairly good forecast reliability. As you get to a week out, it's a reasonable forecast. That's why I say it's reasonable to say that this system will try and organize over the Caribbean waters in the, the course of the next five to seven days, let's say. So let's going out to this coming weekend and next week. So as far as this coming weekend goes, we have no threats in the tropics. Nothing going to be happening. Maybe watching something trying to organize in the Caribbean, and we'll certainly have a better, t uh, a, a better, uh, 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 we will know more at that point once this system does get into the Caribbean and if this system is able to organize. Any models that you see trying to figure this out two weeks or 14 days out, we say poor to, are you kidding me? There is zero accuracy with the models at that point. And any of those long range GFS or Euro forecasts are going to completely change dramatically just about each run, if not each day, you start to see those models. So there is very little accuracy that far that is why I don't share those long range forecasts. That's why when I show you the wind shear, the dry air, the computer plots, I only stop those at about five to seven days. Yes, the models can go beyond that. I don't show it because there is so little accuracy within those long range models. With that said, we kind of know where Fiona is going, what Fiona is going to do, and is not going to be a threat to us. So our focus from Fiona starts to shift away. And far as our tropical forecasting goes, we're going to start to pay a little bit more attention to that wave, which again, at the moment, has a low percent chance of even developing in the next three to five days. It may be that there is an unforeseen pocket of dry air or a little burst of wind shear that helps to rip this system apart, and absolutely nothing happens to it. That's why anything that's going out two weeks there's absolutely no reason to start getting yourself all worked up over. We've got a lot of time to watch it. More, certainly more unknowns than knowns at this time of this little wave, which is only just now being highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. So a lot of time to watch it, a lot of time to prepare for it, if this even becomes an issue at all. What we do know about Fiona, it's staying away from us. What we also know, the Gulf of Mexico looks like it'll stay quiet through at least the next five to seven days, if not longer. So plenty of time to watch the tropics. Fiona, not an issue. That little wave right now, not an issue either, but we will continue to monitor it.